Shalom, shalom, Israel. Peace, love, and light to y'all. All praise, all honor, all glory. Be unto the Most High, Yahuwah, by Shem, Masiach, Yahushah. Man, it's been weighing heavy on my spirit about the spirit of persuasion because I'm seeing it go out into the world and it is heavy. It's heavy and it's a monster. And if you don't if you don't know if you being possessed by the spirit of persuasion, it's going to be a struggle for you to get out of. I've been through a lot along this journey, along uh Along the uh, side of the Most High Or having the Most High on my side Seeking His Word, seeking His truth And understanding how to put all forms of energy Under subjection to His Word And how I can protect myself from these things And the spirit of persuasion was one of those things That I even had to learn That I was possessed by You know, um, it can be good it could be bad, like everything else. Um, everything is a balance, positive and negative. It, can, it, ha it has its uh, weight to. Uh, it has its weights to positivity and its weights to negativity. You know what I'm saying? But the spirit of persuasion is heavy because a lot of people are led by this spirit, but. As they're being led by the spirit, you only under subjection to man. That's the scary part. Because certain people have a gift of gab. Certain people have a uh, persuasive attitude to get to draw you in so much that so much so that they'll draw you away from your loved ones and make you think that they are wrong. Man, that, that spirit is, is is crucial. It'll turn you against your people. You know what I'm saying? And and once you check it, here's the thing. Once you check the spirit of persuasion, you put it under subjection and then it flees. It can't control. Because the spirit of persuasion have to control something. But it's slick. It's not direct. It's through words or through the word. You know, it's through a way of life. It's through your way of life. You know, they can... Find a way to get in to see how they can persuade you to believe or to gravitate towards them and, and their agenda. You know what I'm saying? So I want to I want to be I want to make myself extremely clear. Extremely clear. We have to if we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places, then every spirit that is out there is on uh, is in attack mode and we have to be girded and we have to be mindful of what's coming our way. See, you may be so aware of the spirit of hate that you can't recognize the spirit of persuasion. You may be so aware of the spirit of division that you can't recognize the spirit that's coming to seduce you. We got to be aware of all spirits. This is what the spiritual warfare and the spiritual armor is for. So that we can be aware of all spirits coming into our realm or into our lives disguised, but underneath working for Hashatan. Working for Hashatan against you. Working for Hashatan against um, your loved ones. Working, Hash work, uh, working through Hashatan against other people that, that are close to you. See, these spirits can come in any camp. They can come in any leader, elder, prophet, priest, whatever you want to call yourself. The spirit can come within us all. But we have to know how to recognize it. And I'm going to teach or provide insight. I don't want to say teach. That's too broad of a word. I provide insight. For you to be able to recognize it. And I'm going to use the Torah. And I'm going to use the Hebrew. To break it down. Right? It's not going to be a long class. I'm not going to take up a lot of your time. Um, 
with all due respect, I'll praise all our glory to the most high. I have been said it. Let everything that is said and spoken be said and spoken in spirit and in truth. All right. So let's get into the spirit of persuasion real quick. Let's get into the spirit. Spirit of persuasion. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the definition. I'm going to read the definition of persuasion. All right. Persuasion. Um, process aimed at changing a person or group attitude or behavior towards some event, idea, or person by using written or spoken words to convey information, feelings, reasoning, or a combination of both. Right? Process aimed at changing a person, a person's or group attitude or behavior towards something, an event. Um, some event, idea, or person by using written or spoken words to convey information, feelings, reasoning, or combination of both. I read it twice, just in case you wasn't clear, because I know I talk a little fast. So, this is what persuasion does. It comes in. It sees where, first it sees where it can get in, and then it sees where it can disrupt and disturb the uh, where, it, where it has entered. It has to. It has to because when the spirit of persuasion is on somebody, they are coming to they're they're not coming to entertain or be entertained, they're coming to collect. That's what the spirit of persuasion does. It collects souls. I have you now. I have you. I've basically seduced you. That's what the spirit of persuasion does. It comes to collect. Right? And once it collects, it can't stop until it's put under subjection, until there's someone to rise up to put this spirit under subjection. Oh, you persuade. Like, pastors and preachers have it bad. And they so cold with it that people are still Christians to this day even when the word of the most high is going out that's what the spirit of persuasion does it's so it's so dangerous and it can come into israel it can come into the camps it can come into the congregation it can come into the assembly the minute you start looking up to somebody you've been persuaded to believe and follow every suggestion that they give or every uh Every piece of information that they provide, at the sound of their wisdom, you're taken. You're taken at the very sound of their wisdom. When they open their mouth, they took you through persuasion. You got to be able to know it when you hear it. Because persuasion is basically soothe sayings. Or wise sayings. But because they are wise and because they're soothe, soothing... Does not mean that it the vessel that's pouring that is pouring out of the, don't have crap at the bottom of it. So you can put dirt in a vessel and pour water inside of it. The dirt will settle. And the water will be at the top. But once you pour out, you won't even know it's dirt in there. Until you get to the end. See, you gotta get to the end of these niggas, man. You gotta, excuse my language. You gotta get to the end of everybody's personality so you will know. Where they coming from Or what's in them Cause see we all got a little We all got a little dirt That we pour out We all under subjection uh, We all under subjection Of being corrected We all under subjection Of the curses So we're not perfect But we're aiming to be And perfect is just A, a simple uh, Understanding of balance So We're becoming perfect Most definitely But there's still things That we Um there's still character traits that we have to put under subjection that we got from the world that we bring it into the word, right? Yeah, most definitely. So that's what it does. Now let's read. Let's go to let's go through through the scriptures. And once I go through these scriptures, I'm gonna bring forth the Hebrew word. I'm almost I'm almost done. It's not gonna take long. When I go through these scriptures, I'm gonna bring up the Hebrew word, and then we're gonna break down the Hebrew word, right? But the Hebrew word that I'm going to break down is seduce. The Hebrew word for seduce. Right? So first verse we're going to jump to is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. 
Let's go there. Second Timothy chapter three, verse thirteen. Right? Give me just a second. Second Timothy chapter three, verse thirteen. Read that. Read that to yourself first while I do this. Second Timothy chapter three, verse thirteen and fourteen. There. Read that to yourself. Meditate on that for a second. Right? Meditate on that for a second. I'm going to do something. Read it again. If you already read it once, read it one more time. Read it one more time for me. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 it says but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but continue thou in the things that thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them right so if you are See, this is why I can't say that I can't be seduced, but this is why I study to show myself approved. Because the minute that you start adhering to someone's teachings and someone's knowledge and someone's information, you've become persuaded to be an underling. Now, once you've done that, once you've done that, you've become under subjection to them and this is what people don't understand that yeah they may be reading the scriptures reading the Torah reading reading through um, saying the things that you need to hear but what spirit are they operating in are they saying the things that you need to hear from uh, uh, from a uh, from a um, are they saying the things that you need to hear from a sense of seduction or persuasion are you gravitating to them and their lessons or are you gravitating to the most high those are the two dis distinctions that you have to make oh snap like i want to know what scripture is being read not because you come in the spirit knowing how to preach that i'm i'm gravitating towards you now and the scriptures that you choose and in the, in the, in the lessons that you bring forth we don't want to do that because like the, like the scripture said, let me read it again. It said, but evil men and seducers. Evil men. See, we can recognize evil men. They, they already have a demeanor. But seducers are the ones that are slick and persuasive. You can't figure them out. Because you love it so. You can't, you don't want to. It's like when someone comes into the truth, when I came into the truth, I, I, I gravitated towards people because those were the people that I was learning from. But once I realized that the Most High was actually keeping me from these people physically, I started to understand that the Most High was working on me and that he wanted me to be in service and under subjection to him. This is why from the beginning of my walk, I never started or joined a camp. Never. Because the Most High kept me away because he did not want me to be a part of it. But he did want me to love my brothers and extend that love unconditionally. And as I do this day, I can't say that I'm with this camp or this congregation, but I love my ox. You know, 
But we got to be aware. Because see, the spirit of evil men and the spirit of seducers is aggressive. You ever go to a camp and it's, um, you ever go to assembly or a fellowship and every time you go, it's only one person bringing a lesson? Every time you go. See, that's a, that's, um, that's a way to persuade you to, to get them to, to get you to believe the doctrine that they're bringing. It's never an open platform for where we can discuss our spiritual truths as individuals, but it's always one person bringing a lesson. These are what you call seducers because they want you to believe exactly what this lesson says. Believe in the truth, in the word, the way that I believe in the truth and in the word. But the father has to put it on your spirit to believe his word the way he wants you to know and understand and believe his word. Not through no man. We already had men come through. We learning and studying the lessons now. Not through no man. And this is how you know someone is being seduced. They esteem someone's name. Oh, this person is like, man, I, that's, man, ah, uh, yeah, he, he know his stuff. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a manly man. Like, he's righteous, man. Like, he come in the spirit of the most high. He does. This is how you know someone is, has been seduced. And it only takes them realizing that esteeming someone's name only brings when you esteem someone's name, it brings you to um, situations in your life to where you have to you have to question them. It, it, it works like this for me. Every time I uplift somebody's name, they always do something to make me be like, dang, I shouldn't have never spoke on their name. I shouldn't have never spoke highly of this person because now the Most High is showing me that there is none righteous. So I have a real pep. Every time I do it, it happens. And the most I show me something with people when I speak or esteem someone uh, or give someone any kind of glory, any inkling of glory, any inkling of honor. That's what happens. And it happens to us all. But you have to know that you that you have to know when that spirit comes and when the most high is trying to show it to you. Because if you don't, then you'll most definitely have been uh, possessed by the spirit of persuasion and the spirit of seduction. We want to be released from that. Because now we don't, we don't have to be under subjection to no man, their studies, or their wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We get it. We got it. If this ain't enough, if this ain't enough for you, then I, I don't know what to tell you. But for damn sure, it's not through no man. That's for sure. That's a guarantee. All right? But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. That means that the seducers are actually getting better at seducing. Because they gotten worse. They got better at seducing. Wow. He said they will grow, wax worse and worse. Now we... Already know the demeanor of an evil man, but the seducers are smooth. They get worse and worse. Right? Deceiving and being deceived. Because the, de the because the deception that they are giving, they have to believe it, so they're deceiving themselves. Right? Let's go to uh Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 30. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 30 and 31. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. And my people love to have it so. What? We know you've been seduced. We know you've been persuaded. Because you love it so. You love the soothsayings. sayings. You love the prophetic um, lessons. 
You love to hear this person expound on the truth. You love to hear it. But what you're truly hearing is seduction, persuasion. And at the end of the Sabbath, day, taking their money, collecting from you. Because you've been seduced. You've been persuaded. And I just want to help you notice that this, this spirit comes subtle. The spirit comes meek. It knows how to act subtle. It knows how to act meek. But inwardly, the agendas are set. They are set. And they are set to come to get you to help them build their agenda. To, help, to get you to support their agenda. Yeah. It's sad because some people don't even know it. That they're being seduced. Hold on. Some people don't even know that they being seduced. And this come with time of studying people, come, come with time of studying the word. You can get it. Because like, there are situations in your life where you're gonna cling to someone and they're gonna disappoint you. Because it's not the relationship that you can build with man, but the relationship that you build with the Father. See, the Most High got to move them out of your way because you're giving too much glory to them. Let me show you their true spirit and let them move them out the way. Move them out the way. See, the Most High, gonna, when you esteem man, he's going to show you that nobody gets the glory and nobody's righteous but him. That's what he does. This is why a lot of falling outs happen. This is why a lot of things come from uh, come from the dark into the light. With with all it with all of these leaders, these elders, these priests, and these prophets that they, that call themselves above congregations. See, when you esteem somebody higher than the Most High, then the Most High tends to tear them down. Because see, I don't esteem nobody higher than the Most High. Because I know what that does to man. See, I'm not here to feed your ego. I'm not here to feed your pride. I'm not here to put you on a pedestal. See, when I reverence you and give you esteem, that's what that does. It's automatic. Because it's energy transferred. See, this is what the energy... The, the, it's energy transferred. So if I esteem man, I'm basically esteeming this man from a spiritual, from a spiritual sense... I'm esteeming this man, but if but if it, if it actually took place physically, it's me building a platform when I esteem someone. Me esteeming someone taking a physical form would be me set uh, building a platform, nail and hammer. See, but the Most High, the Most High don't play those games. He let you know every man isn't worthy. But one who truly operates and considers his word and meditates on his word day and night. It's all about the Father. All praise, see, because see, this is this is what happens. See, in one breath we say, All praise, all honor, all glory be to the most high. And then in another breath, you say, double honors to the elders of this dad and such and such. See who you giving the honor. If, you, if it's all praise, all honors, you give no, there's no more honor left to give no one. It's all praise, all honor be to the Father. See, when you, I've seen it so many times, like, that people are being crippled in their studies because they reverence men, they reverence man. They can't wait to the to uh the the moray bring the lesson this week because that's what that's how they are able to study. But see, you gotta study to show yourself approved. And see, when you adhere to one's teachings, you're crippling yourself from being taught by the Father. Yeah, you are, right? So now, let's keep reading. It says, 
a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their means. They bear rule by their means. I'm going to start this congregation because I'm in debt. I'm going to start this congregation because I want to collect. Right? They rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. They love it so. And if you listening, if you listening and paying attention to what they saying, it's not hard for you to grasp it on your own. This is what makes your relationship better with the father when you study and you understand his word for yourself. But they love to have it so. They love to have someone over them because that's how Israel always been. We are people guided by the Father. We always had a lead. But see, you got to know how to put man under subjection, get him out the way, and be led by the Ruach Kakadesh, which comes from the Father. Right? And what will ye do in the end thereof? What will ye do? Asking the congregation, because we know the, the scripture said. The leaders cause the people to err, and those that are led of them are destroyed. Those that are led of them are destroyed as well. What are you to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Separate yourself. Build your relationship greater with the Father who sits in heaven. Because he's the only one that can extend you this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding you need to girt yourself with. He's the only one. The only one. Bless his holy, heavenly, divine name. Because I know who I serve. It ain't no man. Can't be. Why would I do my... Why would I taint my relationship with the Father with, with such... With such stupidity? It's stupid. What will you do in the end thereof? <laughs> See, first you got to hear the words. You got to know and understand that the Most High is trying to pull you first. And if you don't feel the pull, he going to show you. He going to knock you down. He going to show you another side of things so you can feel the pull. He's trying to pull you and get your attention. See, you reverencing me in too much. Because it said, it out, Most High already said it, my people love to have it so. This is how you are able to recognize it. When they prophesy falsely, that's how you're able to recognize it. And the priests bear rule by their means. What are we, what are we uh, underneath you for? What's the purpose? What's the agenda? What is the, um, the cause for the collection of money? Everybody needs to know what this cause is for. Gotta come with it, man. Gotta come with it. You got to come with it for yourself. You got to come with it for your children and your wife. You got to come with it for your household. See, you got to come with it for them. They can't see daddy under nobody. No. Because they don't come to feed my home. They can't see me. As no underling under nobody but the father. I refuse to allow my children to see me under any man. Because then that spirit flows to them. Oh, my daddy was under such and such, such and such at this camp or congregation. Under Moray, such and such, such and such. No, 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 no. No. I'm under the father. I'm under the hedge of protection of the most high. Yahuwah by Shem, I see I got shot. That's who I'm under. Because it's evil men and seducers out here waxing worse and worse. Can't do it. Don't do it to yourself. You owe it to the Father to build yourself up in this word and spirit and in truth. You owe it to the Father. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 6. They have seen vanity and lying divination saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord have not said, sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Wow. 
seducer. Because they made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Your preacher made you hope in him. Your pastor made you hope in him. Your, your moray made you hope in him to confirm the word of Yah. How many mores out here? All of them sent? How many preachers out here? All of them sent? All of them got congregation. All of them got people under them. And the people that's under them probably do believe and adhere to the words that are conf that they confirm from the, from the scriptures. Be careful. Be careful with yourself. Be very careful. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Wow. This is how you know if you are being seduced. If you believe in the words that are confirmed from your more or if you believe in the words that are confirmed from your teacher if you believe in the words that are confirmed from a preacher this is how you know you've been seduced only word we need to believe is the word of the most high do you need man to teach you that because you a man can't teach you how your relationship supposed to go with the father no man taught me how my relationship was supposed to go with the father. The, the, I read what I needed to read. The father told me and instructed me what I needed to do with this. And I corrected it. And, and, and now me and the father's relationship is growing. As far as I know. But there's never work. There's never work all the way done. Everything is all the way, always undone. Because the more you do, keep doing it because it's still not enough. Father requires something from you, but he can't get to you if man is in front of you, blocking you from him. It's like sitting on a curb in the sun. I'm sitting on the curb in the sun, and a man walks up and he blocks the sunlight. Now the now what I need is behind him, but I can't see it because he's blocking it. The, that's the uh, that's the analogy that I give when people reverence me and like. I'm sitting in the sun. I'm purposely sitting in the sun trying to get my vitamin D because it's a chill out here. It's a nice little chill, nice little breeze. Okay, I sit in the sun. I can get everything I need. But then here come this fool. Walk up, stand in front, front of me like I didn't ask for shade. <laughs> I didn't ask for shade. No. You step to the side, man. I'm trying to receive the light from the Shamaims. Trying to receive the light from the Shamaims. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to give one more scripture and then I'm going to break down this word seduce. Acts chapter 17 verse 24. Acts chapter 17 verse 24. Hallelujah. 